Hi there, I'm Mary Susie from Bead Me a Story. And today I want to show you a bracelet that I call the chain link bracelet. I call it that because of the center row in this. You can see that you can very, very clearly see the circles going through the center row and it kind of looks like um, just a two by two chain in the middle. And I've been doing this for a long time. This is basically a variation of back to work weave. And um, recently I showed you back to work as well as uh, working for peanuts. And the working for peanuts is basically back to work with farfalla or peanut beads on the outside. This chain link bracelet basically has rubber O-rings on the outside that are linked together with jump rings and it gives the bracelet kind of a domed shape. So I'm trying to kind of show you from the side here how we get a nice domed uh, shape with this bracelet. It's really fun to make. It's very easy. I'm using pretty good size jump rings in a 16 gauge and a quarter and 18 gauge 3 16 for this. And this latest variation I did of it, I'm using square wire jump rings in the center just to give it a little extra sparkle to it. Okay, so I just wanna real quickly show you a couple of the variations I've done in the past. Believe it or not, um, I've done even more than what you're seeing here. And I may try and include those photos somewhere. But with these ones, you can see that I basically have round wire jump rings in the center as opposed to square wire jump rings. So looks great any way you want to do it. Um, these are, you know, tone on tone kind of colors. And then of course you can add a whole lot of different color variation into this if you want to. Really the sky's the limit. Um, work with whatever colors you're comfortable with. These are very easy materials to work with and I think you're gonna have a great time. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing that you wanna do is make a one by one chain. And I have gone ahead and pre-made about half of this. Uh, for, for a six and a half inch wrist, I'm gonna need a chain that's uh, 22 jump rings and 22 O-rings long. And I need to do that twice, okay? And then I'm gonna take this chain and I'll just show you here, these are the 10 millimeter O-rings. And these are 16 gauge and a quarter inch jump rings. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the ends of this chain and slip them on here. This is just going to keep this directionally right for me as I work this chain on this next row because it's very easy to get um, get the get the chain twisted around because it doesn't have an anchor at this point, okay? So what we need to do is we're going to be connecting four of the rubber O-rings together on the top, and then we're gonna flip it to the back side, and then we're gonna do it on the bottom, okay? And we're gonna do that the whole way down the chain. So let me go ahead and show you here. Okay, so I'm gonna pass through these first two. So you see because of the paper clip, they're holding their direction really well. And then I'm gonna pass through the next two O-rings from those two chains. Okay, and then I'm gonna close. You can really, we're, we're working in larger sizes here. You can work with any pliers you want, flat nose, 90 degree bent nose. I don't recommend that you use um, real tiny ones like tweezer nose for this. Okay, so there is our first. And you can see it's sitting above the silver and it's just passing through four of the celestial blue O-rings. And these are the colors in this project, but of course apply these to whatever colors you're working with. So these are our 10 millimeter O-rings are gonna have its own color. And I'm gonna pass through the first two again, and then through the next pair of O-rings down. OK, 
Okay, and you don't have to use a square jump ring. I'll just mention here, these are 18 gauge, one quarter inch jump rings. I use 18 gauge instead of 16 gauge because when you have the square, um, it's usually gonna match, because these are 18 and not 16, that square edge pretty much matches what, what a 16 gauge and a quarter inch jump ring behaves like. So, so whether you're round, 16 gauge and a quarter inch, or square, 18 gauge and a quarter inch, these tend to be pretty close in size. And like I said, because of that hard edge, the square edge, um, it kind of changes what side you, side you need. Okay, so I'm gonna do this again. So I'll just show you here. So the next one, we're gonna be using the second pair again. I'm gonna pass through that pair, and then I'm gonna go on to the next pair. And see, because I had the paper clip in, holds everything really nicely, and I can just cinch up the next pair, and everything stays directionally pretty much where I need it to be. Okay, so that's the front. And let's do one on the back. I'll do maybe one more row. Um, so you need to do this all down the entire length of your chain. And what you're gonna find out is when you get this done, basically what we have is a back to work chain. Okay, so if you wanna make back to work stretchy, this is how you do it, okay? And the, the thing I don't like about back to work on its own, it's a genius weave. I absolutely love it and I use it for a lot of things. But I like to fill in these outside jump rings with, uh, with something else because they can look a little floppy out there. So I like to fill them up um, when I'm doing them in all metal. I like to fill them up with beads. And in this case, you're gonna see we're gonna fill it up in a really neat way with more rubber and more anodized aluminum jump rings to make it do some neat new things. Okay, so you can see that I'm just, I'm just continuing to work down this piece, okay, to, through the two O-rings and then the next two O-rings until I fill up the entire length of the chain that I need. And you'll probably notice that when you, when you made this first chain, this one by one chain, it seems excessively long to be a bracelet. But once we start adding these uh, square jump rings, which are gonna be on the top and on the bottom, it really cinches up the chain and brings it back down to size again. Okay, so continue on with this step and then I will be back to show you more in just a moment. Okay, so for the next step, you can see that I've got the whole length of this done. So all the silver round jump rings are sticking to the outside. And I have both sides of this uh, framed on the inside with these gold square jump rings. So again, you could be using different colors, but basically, you know, we've got um, the inside jump rings are the round ones, and that's one color. And then the outside jump rings are the square ones, and they're on both sides. And then of course we've got our 10 millimeter O-rings in the middle that are making this stretchy, okay? So the next thing we wanna do is add some 12 millimeter O-rings and some 18 gauge 3 16 jump rings. Okay, and all of these links will be available to you so that you can find uh, these sizes easily. So basically what we want to do, I'm going to use a 450 BN plier to pull these through. I could actually, and I'll just show you this real quick. I could actually just probably shove these through the hole here, but I think it's easier to just pull them through with the pliers. You could also, if you needed to, you could use a little piece of string, okay, and put it through the O-ring and use the string as a needle to feed that through. And um, I've also used a crochet hook before. So there's lots of ways to do this, but I think uh, this is probably the easiest way just because I always have pliers on hand. See how I'm just grabbing this with my tweezers.
tweezer nose pliers. They're a bent tweezer nose, but you could also use the just the basic tweezer nose plier. I just really like my Zeron pliers. They're great. Okay, so see how I just pulled that in? I'm gonna pull one more. Okay, and I'm just working on one side right now. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna start applying my jump rings. So I'm just gonna pass through this first 12 millimeter O-ring. So you can see I've basically folded it in half around that jump ring that's sticking out. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pass through the folded 12 millimeter O-ring on the other side. And if it flips around on me while I'm doing that, that's just fine, doesn't matter. Okay. And then I'm gonna bring it all back around and I'm gonna do this again. Okay, so I'm gonna do this basically the whole length of the chain. Just keep adding more of these O-rings and then passing the jump ring through the O-rings that are basically folded in half. Okay, all the way down. Now, of course, you can see this is pulling to the left and you're gonna consistently be kind of folding this up and pulling it more to the right, more to the right, until we get this into a circle this is always going to, uh, you know, be pulling to one side and that's okay because there's plenty of room for you to get in here. And what I want you to realize is this is, this is going to um, fold into itself. So let me just bring one that's almost finished. So see how this kind of almost curls, okay, and creates a dimensional situation. That's because these 3 sixteenths are much tighter than these quarter inch rings that are in the center. So the rings in the center are larger and then the rings on the outside are smaller and that's gonna create this dome shape, okay? And make this dimensional. Okay, so let me remove that for now. I just wanna show you, I'm just gonna flip this onto the back side. This is all two-sided. Had I wanted to, I could have changed the color of the square wire jump rings, just to mention that and made it um, reversible. But I don't like doing that mainly because of that dome shape that it creates. So I think flipping it back and forth might be too much, uh, too much on your O-rings all the time to keep flipping it back and forth like that. But you could make it reversible if you wanted to. Most of the colors cannot be changed, only that center square, so that's that's why this one, I just leave it one color. Okay, so see, this goes quick. Just pull through, pull through, pull through. So I usually do three or four of these at a time. And then I go to the other side and I'll work more on this. But I like to do that so that it doesn't get um, completely like pulling in one direction or another because if you did one side, it would all curl up on one side and then it would be really hard to reach everything on the opposite side because it would get pulled apart a little bit more. It'd just make it harder. So it's best to do these where you just do a few rows at a time on one side and then switch to the other side and then do a few rows, okay? So you see, this is fairly simple to do. Okay, I'm gonna pass pass through my folded, my second folded 12 millimeter O-ring and fold the third one over and pass through it. Okay. And then I'm just gonna keep adding some more. I'll add some more black in. Link them with the gold rings, add some more black up here, link them with the gold rings, and keep going until I reach the end. So continue on with this, and I'll be back in just a minute to show you how to finish this. Okay, so as you can see, we have reached the end. So when you do reach the end, this is what you're gonna have. You're gonna have two uh, rubber O-rings on the start and the finish end, 
and then we're gonna have to link these together in this same pattern that we've been creating all along here, okay? So this is very simple to do, actually. Um, I'm gonna take my first round jump ring. So this is just like we started. We're gonna go in the same order as we did everything else. So I'm gonna start with my silver rings and I'm gonna link the top O-ring to the top O-ring of the start and finish. Okay, get a good closure. And then I'm gonna go to the bottom row. So that's one O-ring and the other bottom O-ring. Remember, we started on a one by one chain. So we just had an O-ring, a jump ring, an O-ring, a jump ring, an O-ring, a jump ring. So that's basically what we have here. Now I'm gonna take my square wire jump rings and I'm gonna apply, I think I'm gonna do the inside first, just cause it's, it's probably easiest to get this over and done with. See how, how I'm folding that inside out. So I'm gonna pass through two of these O-rings and the other two O-rings. that one and then I'm gonna turn it back around okay and you can see that one on the inside there and then we're going to apply the square wire ring to the outside okay through there through there Close. Okay. And now the next thing we did was our outside row, which we were just doing in our last step. So let me use my needle nose pliers to pull a 12 millimeter O-ring through the top. And to pull one through the bottom. And now all that we've got left is four of the smaller size jump rings, the 18 gauge 3 16 And we're just going to work these into the pattern. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass through this last 12 millimeter O-ring that got worked and into this new one that hasn't been really attached to anything yet and close. Okay. And then I'm gonna pass through this new one and then through the 12 millimeter O-ring that's beside it. It's folded in half. So that's one side that is complete. Just roll this out on my fingers, okay? And then I just need to join this one in. So you can see I'm gonna join it from here to here and from here to here. And then we will be done. And one more. And then once we finish this last one, I'm gonna roll it around on my fingers just to get it into shape, you know, cause we've been kind of pulling and yanking on these and um, we just want to roll it around and even out all of our O-rings and jump rings so that they're all 
kind of symmetrical throughout the piece. Okay, so we pull it out and there you have it. Okay, so this is a fairly stiff bracelet. I'm really happy with these colors. I, I love uh, I love this combination, this kind of uh, celestial looking combination. This will look great with uh, moons and stars and things like that. But also too, you know, when 4th of July comes up, you know, this will mix great with your, with your reds and blues and things like that. Okay, and it's a nice thick cuff. You can see this has got a good size to it. When I put this on, this is one, I don't roll this one onto my hand. I actually use my finger to ease this up over my hand like this, okay? So that's how I like to get this on, but this is a really nice thick cuff. This is great for either men or women, especially because of the uh, size of it. And um, it's really attractive to wear very lightweight. This is waterproof. Um, do avoid uh, any being in any water where there could be petroleum in the water, um, such as, you know, near boats and things like that. Uh, petroleum is the only enemy of your rubber O-rings. But as far as wearing this in the pool or sweating with it on, um, really anything's fine. You can always wash this with uh, some uh, Dove dishwashing soap and warm water. So if you like to wear, if you want to make this in like light colors, like white or something, um, it is very easily washed. So that should not be a problem. And there's really not a whole lot that does uh, anything to anodize the aluminum. This should stay shiny for a very long time and uh, be great piece of jewelry for your, for your jewelry wardrobe. So thanks so much for joining me today and I will see you next time.